Not 902. If 902. My, my Hi, everybody. Correct. The Google machine is correct. The robot is activated. Good evening, everybody. Pull up YouTube now. So I can see what's going on. That says a whole 30 seconds in, we have no viewers. Ah, my heart is broken. Crushed. Why? <laughs> Why? We're. Did I. Did I say what episode this is? I don't know if I wrote down which episode. 49. I might not put. I think it might be 49. I didn't double check. I just assumed that it was 49. 49. Hey, Edward. Oh, goodness. That means uh, next week, if all goes well, it's the big 5 0. It is 50 this week. I am mistaken. Oh, it's this week. I have. I am mistaken. Wow. It is. It is then now. Now is then. And it is. It is. Fifty Half a century. I don't. We haven't even done fifty straight weeks. <laughs> so that definitely means that we've been doing this for like two years now, which is actually kind of crazy. Yeah, I guess it has been about that long. I know definitely. Mm -hmm. I think it was. Yeah, I guess it's got to be. It's got to be. I know we took a little break there during GBWC last year and then mm -hmm. kind of kicked it back up before the holidays. Uh, yep. And then I, d I dip out here and there because of my various obligations for building competition and stuff like that. I always yeah, and, you know, have to life. focus. Focus. Life, vacation. Yeah, and then life and stuff. Like that. Vacations, yep. news, colds. Get a little sniffle right now, Paul. Yeah, is that what you're trying um, to tell me? No, I do not. I'm good now. My sinuses are just going nuts because it's like Oh, allergy time. Yeah, it's allergy time. Well, it's always allergy time here in South Florida. Oh boy, that sounds great. Yeah. Something's always in bloom. <laughs> no. It's awesome. Well, not so bad. You have seven years to catch up to me. It says Edward Leonard. Seven years to catch up to him. What's he talking about? I don't know. Edward, do you do live streams? We talk a little bit here and there in the chats, but... Uh... Or are you 57? <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe he's 57. Could be. That could be. I think Edward. Oh, because if that's the case, then I got. Yeah, I was gonna say I've got four. I've got uh, seventeen years to catch up to because I'm forty. But uh, is cool, but uh, I think yeah, no, it's episode Ed fifty. Edward is the one that's local to me as well. I think he lives in my city. If I remember right, I'm guessing because of the. Uh, Sunny avatar you got going on there. Oh, right. The beautiful sunset. That would make no sense. I have so wrong. many images of that. I'm on the wrong, the wrong coast for that, but. <laughs> you're on the. We, yeah, you're on the wrong side. Maybe that's a sunrise. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the sunrise in the Atlantic is actually really stunning. So. Yeah. I am O. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's Hawaii. Oh, okay. Even cooler. Oh, pimping. Pimping. Yeah, flex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. As it were. All right. Um, oh, wait. Can I edit that there, or do I have to edit it here? I was going to try and edit the. I'll edit it after the fact. I'll correct the number. Episode 50. 50. Five Zai. Five. Right. Oh. Like I said, I was gonna go make a drink, so I'm gonna leave you with Paul. Yep. Uh, who is? I am gonna. You know Paul. Switch, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Nice. Instead of looking at me. Messy. We'll do that. 
I am finishing up this Sananju Stein narrative version. It's for the most part done. I just have to build. Hey, Andy. Uh, I have to build the bazooka and the shield. So I'm, I don't know, halfway through the bazooka at least. So in the next 30 minutes or so, I should have this guy finished up finally. Um, told Brian before we started due to circumstances, I really haven't had a chance to even come in this room or build anything for like two weeks. So it's been sitting most of the way built for two weeks, which is depressing. Very depressing, but so be done Andy. tonight. Hey guys. Hey Andy. Andy. I uh, lost track of time. Andy. Oh, it's all good, man. Having a good, good uh, discussion with my wife. Well, now that she lives there, right? Heaven forbid. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> Hokey dokey. That piece up. Very good. Good job. Oh, good job. Music's, music's not too loud out there in uh, viewership land, is it? It's just fine. Great. Nice and relaxing. Excellent. Yeah. Don't want to make it dull, but I don't want to make it bombastic. Relax to the max, dude. Whoa. He's a tiger. We don't want to put anybody <laughs> to sleep. <laughs> eh, parts are falling. This All right. the, the whole thing is gray and the handle is brown. Who designed this? I don't know. I don't like it. I love how my seems like a strange my choice. Camera keeps adjusting for the light. Like crank it up, on, Andy. It. Hmm? Get your new Gundam unicorn. Yeah. No, are you are you still working on the thing for Zach's? Uh, Hayaku Shiki build off thing? Yep. Or were you not doing that? You were? Okay, cool. I thought I'm so. Doing. Slow and steady progress. That's how it goes, man. So are you going to be um, candy coating and doing a transparent gold on that? or mm, Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, nah, I, haven't, I haven't decided. That's cool. That's I'm a, sure that you'll do like, wonderfully. What, what were you saying, Paul? Uh, before I shut you off, like yeah. a jerk. Ow. The the mm. that yeah, kind of makes right? that contest tough in my mind. Yeah, like I don't know. I think the Hiyakushiki is like synonymous with gold. In my mind, it's hard. To, I, I don't. I haven't found too many customers that were. I'm crazy about the color I love scheme. Gold. <laughs> I think tonight I'm more in a build, snap build mood. Heck yeah, buddy! Have a good time. Talk, talk. Let's talk about some of the stuff. Let's do the thing. We're doing, oh yeah. We're at the workbench, dudes. We're at the workbench, my dude. <laughs> I am obviously knee deep in painting and logistics, so I'm doing boring stuff right now. Um, or exciting. Andy, you just how you look at it. went to another IP. Right? Yeah, well, I mean, it just depends on what 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 you know, tickles your pickle. Your um, what dreams your Twinkie. Yeah. Finds your lost remote. So. Yeah. Syracuse chapter of IPMS had their mm. annual Syracon. Syracon. 
Sir. Yep. Uh, yep, they uh, hold it in uh, the American Legion up in Cicero, New York, so it's not even Syracuse, but anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> It was good. We we had we had a uh, great Gundam turnout. Um, last year we had less than ten. I think we got over twenty this year. Oh, cool! Really? That's pretty That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Was it a lot of people who had just got into it, kind of, or? Um. Yeah, a lot of people from our our uh, local hobby town Gundam group. Nice. Out of Waltz? Yep. I, Waltz, happy town. I only know that from you. I was going to bring my double Zeta here, but I broke the head. Oy. Uh, so let's see if I can pull it off and not break it this time. Uh, well... <laughs> I didn't break it, which is good. But it did fall apart. <laughs> but I, uh, I in intended it to be uh, less uh, prone to fall apart. Sorry about that. I'll give you the solo layout. Let me see. So you can see I extended those pegs and then added this detail part in there. And then I added... An extension on the front of the crest part here, the mohawk thing. Mm -hmm. so I could get like a, like a longer front to back, and I put these uh, these extensions to fill the gap. If nice. It makes work. a <clears throat> yeah. It gives it a, a long longer head. It makes a nice detail too on the right at that junction with the reveal. Yeah, I like that kind yeah, of like, gap. Yeah. I'm not concerned about filling that gap because if I if I prime it black inside there, it'll it'll, it'll pretty, just look okay. It'll look like a look intentional good. designed gap. But anyway, these pegs that I had extended in there had them too long, and they would stick in the back here, and they would just pull themselves apart when I tried to separate it. So, oh, and I had this uh, little extender there to hold the poly cap. Plenty of head work. And that's just a little uh, little bit of styrene, right? A little tube, bit of tube section there. Is that what that is? Yep. There's a tube section in there. I don't know. I don't know the diameter off the top of my head. It's all right. It's whatever fits. They're all different. So, like yeah. for someone that's gonna like take your tip and try and use it, yeah. so there's another it fits. Another tube section behind there, that part there, and then a little bit up top there. Anyway, anyway, I was anyway. gonna bring this. I was gonna bring this, but it fell apart on me the night before, and then I realized. They they don't like repeat entries, so if I ever finish this, I wouldn't be able to enter it again. Hmm. Oh, at the wow. Okay. <clears throat> so be it. I suppose without no, some sort of like a large or major um, modification. Yeah. Here, so we had a, um, they they finally added Gundam as a category. Mm -hmm. They didn't they didn't quite have them set up right, so they had one one hundred and smaller, and then larger than one one hundred. So that so that put one forty fours and one one hundreds together in the same category. Well, that's kind of funny. So we didn't we didn't have any that were. I, I mean, my armored core is 172, and uh, right. that was the only one in that size group. Actually, there there was another, but it was uh, 
they had a high grade Jesta done in like 135th scale with some little little mans. Mm -hmm. um, so they they reworked the um, categories to be 1144 and uh, 1100 and larger. So that um, that even things out for the judging. Yeah. So they didn't have a, a group of 15 and, and less than that. <clears throat> or just like a big mass. You know, yeah. your judge, judge 30 things, pick three. <laughs> <clears throat> it is a little bit rough. I don't know if I'd be able to do it, to be honest with you. This will be a little janky, but... Hey man, it's like Brandon always says, do it badly. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw this one. Yeah. Oh, you can probably screen share if you want to, if you can pull it up on your PC. But I don't, I don't want to mess with that in OBS. I, I don't. Know. Oh sure. I don't really know how to I do that it. yet. Um, it was up, Hasaki. Yeah. Dropped in. Yeah, you can see my um, my armor core right there, and. Okay. My GM sniper back there. That's the first paint painted kit I ever did. The GM sniper? Yeah. Nice. And my Very friend nice. Mike did this goof with the LEDI. Oh, that's cool. And uh, this Sazabi took first place. <clears throat> yeah, that was really clean. Yeah, it's got the uh, Mechanicore dual Gatling expansion set. Mm -hmm. Oh. Nice. So it was like, what is that like? Yeah. A tan color? Uh, white. white, white, or a light gray? Yeah, it's like a white, a couple of shades of cream and a gray, right? Yeah. And then the um, this really nice wing didn't place at all, but um, yeah, under under this uh, vegetation, somewhere under there, is a GM sniper too. <laughs> these are getting a little hard to see zoomed in but there's uh, that Jesta and, oh the Jesta yeah, it's out of focus but uh, it's trying anyway you can find this picture on my Instagram yep I was actually just going to like kind of in the works over here trying to pull it up and do a screen share but Anyway, you can see, whoops, you see all these, like, originally we had, like, this space for both categories. And then they just, what? They just expanded them all. They had to. Yeah, they didn't have enough room. But, uh, there's a RG Talker. I think this one in the, the 144th category. There's that wing. I like the uh, colors on that. That wing. There's my sniper. I liked how the uh, light from the open door was going through the visor. Oh, oh cool. It's got like a nice uh, cool effect. Yeah, we all know this guy. <laughs> I've seen that. Oh, yeah. And then there's the, there's the winner right there. So I placed in second and third. Awesome. Congrats. So, Hell yeah. That was pretty exciting. Yeah, especially with that many entries. That's, a, you know. Yeah. Um, somebody had a cool A-team van. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Sorry if I took it down too fast. No, you're good. Yeah. I don't understand what the fuck this thing is doing. And I got, I showed this in the Discord, but I got both of these for 10 bucks. These are the old US release HGUC. We have the skill level three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Someday I'll take a look at those and see how they are. Yeah, you'll mess around. I have a couple of those old Bandai ones from way the heck back in the day. I have like a really, uh, like a vintage one and then I have one that's like a reissue. Yeah. There was a guy that did a Titanic with a, 
real water in an aquarium. It was creative, I guess. <laughs> It was, it was it was it was slightly comical watching him fill the uh, aquarium up a coffee cup at a time. One <laughs> coffee cup at a yeah. time. He had a he had a gallon jug of water and was pouring it into a coffee cup and then into the <laughs> I suppose the Sina has disturbed thing, I guess, yeah. but I don't know. Alright. Alright then. Hmm. It was a it was a really really fun time. the The announcer guy, um, the micro he, machine man. No, <laughs> no, of course not. Sorry. The guy announcing the the awards. He he doesn't he doesn't know how to pronounce anything, so he's messing up names and <laughs> uh, people's names and names of models. He called the Sazbi a sushi. <laughs> Oh, I, I think he. I think he was just playing it up for laughs because he, he said Saz would be right, like for the uh, one forty four scale category. Mm -hmm. but messed it up for the one one hundred scale. <sighs> Joker, wise guy. Man. The owner of the MG Sushi, please come. Up. You have left your lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Now I gotta figure out what I want to work on. Hmm, that's always the problem. It can be. Thing. We often just sit and recount the things in the backlog and yeah. don't go anywhere. Can I work on now? I do that very often. <laughs> I think I'm going to go digging in the closet. All right. I'll be back. We'll hold down the fort. Digging All in right. the closet. <laughs> I'm just about done with this bazooka. One more part left. And then I can take it all apart and put it on the rifle because it looks cooler that way. I'll put this back on my shining, smiling face so that it's uh, a little bit more entertaining. And just a set of hands or two on some cutting mats. <laughs> I'll heed Alex's advice. So uh, what parts are you painting now? Uh, uh, hey, 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 that's a fun thing to say. All of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All of it. I spent um, another like good you know, 10 hours or so plus um, just like masking. Mm. things and uh so now that everything's this is all masked out for the uh camouflage pattern layer ah okay um i went through <clears throat> i went through and applied the chipping medium hairspray my preferred <clears throat> my preferred type is the tresemme oh yes the, fine uh... Strong fine. Or... The finest. <laughs> uh, this is this is just normal ass hairspray. This is a a three a level three hold. Whatever the fuck that means. But you don't actually want the strong hold. You want like a medium to a light hold. But the ultimate thing is you want a really fine mist because what you want mm. is like a, a like really small droplets of like you want atomized hairspray that's on a very small point. So like, this is one thing that I've actually come across quite a bit. And those of you that are paying attention right now, this is a good tip. Um, and you're going to love this one because if you want to do some chipping like this, this is going to help you a lot. Um, there are two things that really matter when it comes to doing a hairspray chipping or any sort of chipping medium. And that is consistency of your chipping medium and the consistency of the paint that goes on top of it. So I use this hairspray. Uh, I bought a whole case of it. Um, <clears throat> read a book by Mike, Rom Mike Rinaldi. Uh, talks about it. Let me get this out of here so it's not blown. To All right. Read a book by Mike Rinaldi. Um, he talks about using this specifically, and uh, I've employed that stuff, and it all works really, really well. Um, and uh, the paint, basically, on, on top, you don't want the paint to be too thick. Uh, is really what the strong point about that is. You want it to be a nice, even consistency, flowing well in your brush, but not overly thin, because you might affect this. But, yeah, you don't want to add too much paint. 
But what I was going to tell you about the hairspray, and this is the real tip, because that's the thing that people have the most problem with, is getting this at the right spot. So when I'm spraying my hairspray on my part, you get a part. And you can see. You guys can see that, right? That's pretty big. I am spraying this, like, literally 18 inches away from the part that I'm putting it on. Yeah. And I spray... I, Deep in my air, deep in my spray booth, I'm like way deep in here, and I'm way back here spraying this down inside there. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the you want to make sure that the part that you're spraying is super illuminated so that you can see where all these drop droplets are going or what I call them dropulets before whatever <laughs> all these little atomized hairspray parts. You want to see where those are going so that you don't get a flood like a big puddle. You don't want a puddle. What you want is a bunch of like little speckles that hit and dry all over it, and you want to like as opposed to like you want to like little spritzies because this stuff really wants to go so little spritzies and you get these little like sprinklies all over and what happens is that stuff all dries ultra flat because that's how hairspray works but it remembers that it was a little drop before it dried flat with all of its brothers and sisters so when you put the paint on top and it's this nice matte coat, like super thin, matte, semi-matte, whatever, glossy, whatever. It doesn't really matter because the paint's all going to react the same to the, the hairspray process. As long as it isn't too thick, you can work at it with the with the, uh, the little bit of water on a brush, light form, you know, a little bit of water and like a brush with like semi-stiff, like straight bristles and a paper towel to blot the water out of your brush because you don't want it to be too wet. You can create those tiny little chips and perfect little uh, like subtle details that go on. Now, the reason that I say that doing the tiny little droplets are so important is because, like I said, they all remember that they were separate before and it doesn't want to come out in these big chunks. So if you get a thicker hairspray coat, if you make those floods, which happens, it's okay. It's, it happens. Don't feel bad. Um, same thing with the paint. If the paint goes on too thick, you're going to fight it and you're going to end up with big chunks that come out or worse to it in a situation that I've been in before where I did like this. I did like a brown layer. I did the the uh, medium, chipping medium on it. I did a detail layer on top of it with several different layers of color. I did the chipping medium again. I did another top layer on top of that. And But the top layer that went onto it was too thick. So for me to work at it to get down to it, I blew through all of the other work that I did all the mm. way down to the base. It was a little bit disappointing because I did this like whole... <clears throat> on my Angel of Death, I did this whole like Saku shoulder where I expanded it and everything. And I detailed it to look like a kind of like a race car design where i did it in like a bright blue and a bright white with like a racing number on the outside so it was like a co-opted part from some sort of different you know zaku games or something where they had like zaku's in a battle arena where they're all painted up like race cars or something i was just kind of like playing with my own head cannon and uh yeah exactly kind of like robo jock something along those lines exactly so i wanted to like give it that thing where the the overall desert scheme that was painted on the outside of it <clears throat> could be chipped away to either reveal the original Zaku colors, which was painted underneath that in the whole model, or like the special co-opted shoulder unit that was taken from an entirely different, like, you know, space of headspace or something. So, But um, yeah, that's my hairspray chipping talk for the evening. <laughs> Sorry, I get a little no. manic. And Good stuff. So this is when much about this, this model is from when I discovered panel lining. <laughs> <clears throat> Look at those lines. Actually, it doesn't read that. It reads pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look bad. I did some uh, black on white panel lining for my first kit. That was really rough. This gun with the bazooka attached is gigantic. It's like my hand. My <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Like I'm gonna get the here's the guy. Here's the stop. <laughs> Perfect. It's a big dude. Perfect. I like it comes with a fixed pose hand just for the gun. So you can you don't have to use the manipulated hand. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Because I like oh, the man. I like the three point hands um, oh, for cause... posing and stuff, but for holding, you know, a rifle, the fixed pose do have their place. 
Well, my Verka has posable hands. It doesn't have the fixed pose hand. Yeah, this one only comes with the one just for the, the rifle. Weird, but mine holds the, the rifle perfectly. I don't think you can't attach the bazooka to the bottom, though, right? Oh, no, you can't. This thing is... I don't, I don't I think... I don't oh, think even with right. fixed pose you are going to hold that up. But. I'd buy that for a dollar. Yeah, <laughs> hey, options, man. Maybe I don't want your stick. No, it's good to have. Yeah, they should do more like fixed pose hands in with like opposable hands or opposable hands and stuff like that. Yeah, I think if they're going to give you 3.0 hands, I like, but they should always give you a fixed pose, at least just for the rifle or whatever yeah. weapon they're going to give you. Yeah. Yeah, that's usually been my gripe about this stuff is that like you got like the Origin RX, like that thing can't hold anything to save its life. Yeah, and well, you know what else is nice too when you have a, a hand swap option, like you have, you know, like you can paint all this, glue this fixed pose hand to the rifle, and then it's much easier to pop the wrist joint out than try to take the hands apart and move them and then put them back together. You know, it's that? easy to pop out and pop in. It is very true. A little more plug play. Yeah, it makes for an easier swap, I think. Yeah, Edward Leonard, I think we're all in, in agreement on, on having some small level, at least, uh, for of hatred for the posable hands. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that they're really cool, like engineering wise, it's, it's wild to the first time you cut one apart. You're like, what the hell was that? <laughs> yeah, I was really worried about breaking them, and I did. Yes. I broke several of them. Ultimately, I ruined them in a way, or, or made them overworn. You know. Yeah, yeah it's easy to do. I'm kind of a homunculus mongoloid at times. So, uh, <laughs> homunculi. Can't help it. I'm but a man. Okay. Making my little color swatch here. Color swatch. Uh, layout. Percentage layout. Oh, sweet. You have to cut out in the good head head pattern. Up. Heads up, everyone. When you're cutting out E, cut it out cleanly. <laughs> Ah, FYI. Wouldn't want yeah, uh, clean, clean E. For my camo, I'm doing a Flectarn uh, camouflage adaptation. What did you call me? I said a Flectarn camouflage <laughs> adaptation. It's a weird word. You're not familiar? I thought you called me a fucktard. Hey, if I was gonna call you a fucktard, Paulie, I'd call you a fucking fucktard, Paulie. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> and then we go get some cannolis and some fucking uh, macaroons, you know? Uh, have a nice cup of tea, maybe. Macaroons. <laughs> Yeah, I was just watching uh, Impractical Jokers earlier this evening, and, and Sal and Joe were eating cannolis and macaroons, respectively. <laughs> <laughs> it was very good. Oh, I, so check this out, dudes. I was watching... Uh, so I've been working a lot lately on my project, so, uh, Deadline. And uh, <clears throat> I've been watching... Just, you know, going through watching the movies. I like to watch the superhero movies because I've always been a fan of superheroes and all that shit. And uh, so I put on Amazing Spider-Man, you know the not the Toby and not the original, not the most recent one, but not the Tom Holland, uh, but the Andrew Garfield. The, sure, yes, Andrew Garfield one. So mm -hmm. I watched. I mean, I saw the first one in the theater. Thought it was good. Didn't have a problem with it. So I watched it again. Also, not not bad. Didn't mind it one bit. Um, and then I watched the second one today, and I forgot that my metal shop made parts and props and set pieces for that movie. Oh, really? So like. I was like, oh, shit, this is that part where Electro becomes Electro. And like, oh, shit, there's the table. We made that table that he's laying on. And it's like, oh, those lights. We made those lights. It's really, really cool <laughs> uh, to see that. And like, there's a bunch of stuff that hasn't happened yet that I'm going to go, that I'll watch. And I haven't watched, I didn't finish it. 
um, my, my wife came home and had to get busy doing people stuff. Um, but yeah, it was pretty tight. No volume. That's so cool. Hold up. Edward just said we got no volume. All of us do. I've got volume in Streamlabs. That's where I'm listening to it. Yeah, I can hear you guys as well. Let me... StreamYard, not Labs. Yeah, StreamYard. Let's see if I can get some feedback here on my phone. Yeah, I was just going to say I just unmuted on right. YouTube and I could hear you guys because of the lag. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. All right, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for checking in, chat. Thanks, Julius Demsky and Husky. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, I can hear us now, too. And here I am looking at my phone, watching myself look at my phone. That's fun. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, so that was kind of cool to see some of that stuff. Um, working for this company has been pretty tight. We've made a bunch of stuff for a lot of different movies, and it's cool to see things here and there. I got I to gotta just, like, make myself a playlist and then go through and watch all the movies for stuff that I've made shit for. I like uh, that iteration of Spider-Man as well. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I didn't think the Andrew Garfield one was all that bad either. I mean, I haven't gotten to the Paul Giamatti becomes Rhino uh, thing uh, in, yeah, uh, in the second one. Like, I don't know. Well, he was the he was the tow truck driver, wasn't he? Like the guy that was all tattooed up with like the really fake Russian yeah. accent, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, I was like that. I think he that's makes like a Paul earlier on. Yeah, it's really really weird. It's like I don't know. It's so bizarre, but um. Yeah, I gotta watch that one. I gotta watch what the Born Ultimatum and the Born uh, Born Supremacy. We did some stuff for that. We did some stuff for the Adjustment Bureau. A lot of stuff apparently for Matt Damon. Matt Damon and uh, Matt Damon. I did stuff for Men in Black Three, and we did stuff for I did stuff for Sherlock Holmes, which was pretty tight. The first scene in the first Sherlock Holmes film with uh. Uh, what's his name? Downey Jr. and uh, Jude Law, right? Yeah, Jude Law. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. yeah, Jude Law kicks my fireplace. I made that fireplace. Wow. Um, that was fun. That was like probably the first How thing. Dare he? <laughs> no, dude, it was hype. I had a good time. Um, anyway, so it was, that was, yeah, it was cool shit. Odd, odd stuff. Um, but yeah, so Jude. the channel that I'm doing, um, I learned a sneaky way of doing this in a magazine so i'm going to tell you all about my sneaky way those are the few of you that are that are hanging around watching me you'll get a chance to see sneakiness yeah you're going to learn something that's the thing people don't realize when they come and hang out with us they actually learn something instead of just like you know i don't know why they hang out with other people <laughs> 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 Anyhow, um it is flex tarn is essentially a modification on. There you go. This is kind of like a, a fleck tarn of sorts. I'm going to switch cameras. Hang on a second, guys. This isn't helping anyone. Boom. Right. So this is kind of a form of fleck tarn. All right, you see that on the back corner panel there? of that tank all the dots all the multiple colors oh, yeah, and layers yeah, yeah. and stuff like that yeah this is kind of a really super duper simplified one i'm going to do a very much more intricate one with a lot of different sizes of uh of of dots and stuff like that but essentially what this modeler did was they went through they like sprayed an under layer of detail color here and then covered in a ton of tiny little dots of masking tape that they punched out Holy with a hole punch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dedication. Yeah, so I've got, I've got <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually not that bad. Believe it or not, man, I've spent I've spent 30 hours masking in the last week alone. So that is nothing to me at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um yeah, you do that and then you you know you spray more paint on it and then you you know you you clean it up. And you end up with, you know, uh, some layers of some dots, essentially. So it's just ultimately layering and layering and layering colors. You just kind of have to figure out your pattern and figure out what you want before you start doing it. So you have to plan ahead. 
and uh, I've been planning many, 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 many steps ahead, making my lists, checking, it checking off. Yep, checking off them boxes. Uh, yeah, so we're getting there. Essentially, I've chosen a color palette of like muted muted grays and stuff that probably won't read, but those are my percentages for the color uh, dot ratios, and uh, that all equals out to being my pattern. Wow. Yippy whippy. I went science paint again on everyone's surprise. Science. Bitch. <laughs> Whoa. Magnets. I did have a uh, a science bitch t shirt. <laughs> I haven't watched the movie yet. <laughs> I have not watched I haven't watched it in Salud. I have not watched it either. Sorry, I couldn't get to the mute button in time. They sneak up on you, man. How dare you be a human? <laughs> I'm so upset. All right, Edward, did you uh, did you make it back? Did you find your did you find your sound? Beam sabers now. Uh, they're pretty straightforward on the Stein, unless they changed them from narrative. Well, no, they're three parts: the hilt, the top, and the and the flip out thingy. Oh yeah, yeah. Two of them, yeah. one in each arm, I guess. Uh, I think it's is it this one? Oh no, it's a square one. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's uh, no, this is round. It's round. Oh, so yeah, it is this one then. Yeah, it's this one. And it, it like hides up in the forearm. Looks like. Sure. Which is cool. I like that. I've never have I utilized it. Yeah, I have actually. I did once. I had it set up with it in the shield and the shield on with the gun up in the air. But I've since removed that from the setup. I have to go. Where are my punches? Ah, my new shelf has changed the orientation of everything I need. All right, so I have a few different shaped hole punches from my years as a leather worker. I think I'm going to end up having to make a punch, though, in those. Make a hole punch. They're probably pretty small holes, yeah? Yep, I need to make some smaller ones. I don't have any. I have plenty of decent, like, size ones for, like, you know, like I said, doing metal, like, uh, leather work for that matter. Um, but I don't have. Oh, oh where's the. It's got to be really something. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh. I'm in luck. I'm a metal worker, so I can do this. I mean, you don't have to be a metal worker to do this, so. <laughs> don't let me dissuade you from trying. Okay. Essentially, that. Ooh. Ooh. No, it's too big. There we go. Cool. So, what I've run into, friends. Is that I've got this is like the smallest hole size I've got, and this dude is hopefully that wasn't too loud on the microphone side. I wasn't that bad. Well, it's about five millimeters wide. Too this big. one is, yeah, it's pretty decent. I mean, I'll use it because I want some spaces that big covered up. You know, I've also got this one that is. Uh, 316. So this is a standard Ameri uh, American measurements, but it, this is an oval um, basically for cutting loops in belts and uh, stuff like that. <laughs> so what I've got here in my little pile of love, I have a cylinder or a tube, a brass tube with a 4 millimeter interior dimension and one with a 2 millimeter interior dimension. These little guys, oh, here we go. Zoom in the focus. If I put them on the same plane, they will focus. Yeah, so these guys, they're just regular brass tubes, 
there come from that hobby store, buy a bunch of stuff, get a bunch of stuff. Brass beef pork. Good, uh, good description, huh? So, um, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a file, um, one of my Tamiya hobby files, plain old, same old homeboy we all know and love, and I'm going to file a sharp edge on it so that I can use it as a punch. Brass is incredibly soft, so you shouldn't have an issue filing it away if you choose to do this. Uh, one thing I will say is you should never draw the file backwards over the material surface, as you will make it dull. Um, these files are sharp, but they will not stay sharp if you draw them backwards over metal. Plastic doesn't really matter that much because plastic is pretty soft either way, but metal is a cruel mistress, we'll say. And she will treat you badly if you treat her badly. All right, one pass around, not enough. It does take a little bit of practice to get the angle of the file correct with the angle of the edge of the tube. Uh, so it's going to take a little bit of practice. You might mess it up. Don't feel bad because that's just reality of the situation. You can always file it smoother on the end and refile it to a sharp point. That's what I always tell people when uh, I talk about the work that I do. I'm like, oh, yeah. And so, you know, if I come across a situation on site or whatever situation where, some, you know, something is wrong, I'm like, oh, you know, this and this is fucked up and blah, 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 blah. It might sound like I never fuck up, but it's because, like, I never leave a thing messed up. <laughs> so if I mess it up, which happens, I fix it. And subsequently, it's no longer messed up. But I don't ever tell anybody about it. We blame it on the guy that's not here today. <laughs> hey, you know what? Man behind the curtain. No, because it doesn't do you any good to find out about that stuff. What matters is like, in, and also I won't complain about somebody that uh, messes something up and, and fixes it because they fixed it. Essentially, they didn't mess it up. So as you can see, I've got a little bit of a ooh, the middle brag guy. Here we go. Oh, I'm still learning camera. I'm an infant. Um, yeah, so you can see I've got a little bit of an edge around there. There's still a little bit of a flat on it. That's why it gives it that cool, like, perfect circle around on there. Another couple of couple passes. Oh, yeah. I agree with you, Edward. Brass is definitely too soft, but you know what? I've got this at hand, and uh, there it is. That's my my answer. I mean, ultimately, I could put something on the lathe and make any size of something I want. So I've got that going for me, which is nice. There's a Caddyshack reference for those of you that didn't catch it. <laughs> I'm trying to put a bean for his guy's arm. He's not going there. Polly is knee deep in parts. Not easy to see. Okay. It's in. You hunt and snipe over there? What's going on, man? I said, are you hunting snipe over there? What's going on, man? Yeah, the his uh, the forearm cover like flips up, and the beam saber goes into his forearm. Uh, so it, it, the whole piece just kind of moves out of the way, and the beam saber shoots out. It's cool. I like it. Uh, it's functional. You don't have to hold the beam saber. It makes a lot of sense. But it is not easy to get in there. So uh, especially when the model is fully built. Yeah, along with that big dude with those fuel tanks and stuff, trying to squeeze a little bitty, bitty tiny beam saber in his arm. Mm hmm. But we did it. I am picking up what you are putting down. It is done now. Because, you know, if that wasn't enough. We got to put a grenade launcher in his shield. Wow. Well, because, All right. fuck you, narrative. 
You're going down. That's pretty sharp. Okay, so I got this. This is now pretty sharp. You can see that as I move it, it doesn't really have like that big ring of reflection on it because I got rid of almost all the flat. It isn't incredibly sharp, but it doesn't have to be incredibly sharp. I feel like I get the focus. Sorry, dude. Too close. But yeah, essentially, I just put a little chamfer around the edge, put a little bit of sharpness on it. I got some uh, masking tape right here. Let's see if I can make a mark. Give me a little hammer. Let's see. That hammer is way too big. The BFH. Mm. <laughs> it is actually obvious because I don't want to dig the persuader. It's... This is my little buddy. I'll switch. Uh, I'll switch cameras here to show you guys. It's my little friend. I named him uh, Mjolnir. <laughs> Essentially, it is an eight-pound sledgehammer with a handle that fits your hand. Dang. So it's it's a, called a mover. You use it to move stuff. <laughs> that looks pretty handy. But uh, yeah, we had a broken uh, broken hand. Yeah, we, hey. we had a broken handle on an eight-pound sled, and so I made a, a handle out for out of a uh, white oak for it, and acquired the crazy hammer. Hammer of moving. Mjolnir. All right, so this is really going to probably ruin this tube in the long run. I don't really have to do anything but set it down. Yep. <laughs> that was it. Good. And how did it work? All right. There you go. A little ah, four millimeter perfect circle. Ah, perfect. Fabulous. All right, now I'll make one that's uh, two millimeters wide. The only thing about this that sucks is that my hands are gigantic. Hmm. And this stuff is all very small. Here we go. Oh, yeah. When in doubt, use a tool, baby. Cool. So what I've got is my little button. <coughs> it allows me to put the brass in between. I can just roll it with my finger this way and use the file against it and make it really easy for me to make this this work happen. Tonight on Live at the Workbench, we learned how to make tools. Circles. Circle tools. Which reminds me, I've never used my Ulfa cutter or my other crazy off-brand circle cutter. I was looking for one, but the only ones I could find made circles too big. Like they were, it wasn't what I was looking for. Yeah, um, what I have for is something that's good for arcs. I'm going to say I have these. Clearly, I have never used either one. <laughs> but yeah, I've got the Ulfa and then the other crazy knockoff one. What I want is there's a there's like a stenciling tool or a uh, scrapbooking tool that makes all sorts of shaped cutouts. Um, and what's his name? Can't think of it now. Uh, Gundam UK. Simon's got like a a little tiny one that he makes little little tiny circles, but I can't remember where he got it from. Mm -hmm. I think he got it from uh, what's that Chinese site called where they just sell like stuff? It's like Chinese Amazon. How about? Yeah, I think that's where he got it from. 
Yeah, I don't know. We could always ask Simon. He's pretty awesome community bro. Yeah. I had it written down somewhere, like when he I saw it one oh, day. Of course. It one of his videos, and I was like, I gotta get that. Where did he get that from? I know there's been a bunch of like smack talk on the circle cutters and stuff over the years. Not necessarily by you per se, but just in general. In the community. Almost sharp enough. All right, now he's got a grenade launcher in his shield. Very logical. Who <laughs> wouldn't want a grenade launcher in their shield? Oh, Honestly. yeah. That's where I, I got a little Mjolnir. Little Lord Mjolnir, Roy. Yeah, that cuts. Eat a little pot. Those of you that watch Forge and Fire. Eat will kill. Oh, sugar, sugar, boys. All right. Now let me. Did you say something about Forge and Fire? It is. How else are you going to do it? Uh. <laughs> you know the show I'm talking about, right? I think so. so yeah, I was on History Channel. Or is on like History or something? One of those? Yeah, it's a, a blacksmithing show. One of their judges always says, It will cut or it will kill. All right, there it is, dudes. <laughs> Bam. Four millimeter, two millimeter. Oh, nice. na 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 na. <laughs> Get another one. Yeah, that is not gonna hold that up, huh? Hell yeah. Yes. All right. He is built. All done. Done ski. Sweet. Excellent. You have our gratitude. Which we can fix more. Watched the Kentucky Fried movie the other day. That's a classic. Don't know classic what, but <laughs> <laughs> it is a weird one. I like that, that there's a gigantic spoof of Enter the Dragon in it. I think that's really the part that I like the most. All right, so there's all of the sizes. It looks like my thumb is a disease, but so I've got like a five millimeter, a four millimeter, a two millimeter, and then this three sixteenths oval to use as my various splatterings. Cool for my shit. I think this is gonna be all right, guys. Gonna work. Not that I was necessarily feeling bad about it, but I feel actually really good about it right now. Where is my... All right. Now I have to cut out 15 runners worth of spare parts. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. You know, you could always not... Do that. Don't do it. So you can always knock it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you can save it for a rainy day when you're watching some anime. Yeah. Breeze through this. That's all right. That's it. Some of it's some pretty cool stuff, actually. So kind of interested just to see what I cut out. Pretty much a whole other shield right here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I bet it's like the standard for Kashi. Yeah, it actually looks just like a, a direct duplicate of what I actually put on there already. It might be slightly just different in color. Got a lot yeah. of extra parts. Yeah. yeah. You got like a to build a rifle. 
Oh yeah. No, you will get. Um, you should get anyways. Like almost a whole inner, lower frame. And actually, and upper frame. You get a lot of the parts, like the thigh parts, the calf parts, the the uh, cradle or the uh, pelvis area. Um, crotch piece. Yeah. <laughs> the, the crotchal region. Um, yeah, you're gonna need a lot. I think I had an extra, an extra torso frame too. I used that on on this OMC build, and the leg components and components for my um, my Stein. I'm gonna put you, put you there. Well, next I need to make a bunch of punches. <sighs> it was kind of exasperation. Kind of <laughs> <on. Okay. laughs> I'm going to leave everything as a pile of parts so that everyone can see how much spare parts this thing comes with. Do it. Pile of parts. What? No belt sander in the apartment? Edward Leonard said about 15 minutes ago. Of course not. Oh, right on. Hey, Husky, I see you had to leave. This is all posthumously as you've already left, but adios. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, I'm good with my hand tools. I don't need this crazy stuff. Besides, if I want to dig out my drill and everything, that's just a mess. I mean, if it's small enough, I could put it in the Dremel, I suppose. All right. Do I feel okay about these colors and what I have chosen for their relationship? I may have not given it bright enough appeal. Hmm. Hmm. What did you decide on building, Andy? Well, it has a, a green ball cockpit. A green ball cockpit? Okay. So that narrows the choices down a little bit. Just a bit? Mm -hmm. Sure it does. <laughs> Ball cockpit. The solid beak? Nope. No. Sushi? No. Is it a Galgoog? It is not. A unicorn final battle version? Nope. Sorry. Yeah. Is it um is it a one of those uh mechanical harrows? <laughs> like a haro piloting a haro or whatever the heck it is no nope. it's a master grade oh it's a master grade haro piloting a haro <laughs> <laughs> no such thing exists green ball cockpit what did I do for the, green? the F91 is not green it's clear oh what if it was a different F91 is it mm. a Harris Anyone? No. Nope. Not a Harrison Martin? Okay. Sananju? Is, is, it an a green ball? is it an Aston Martin? It's Universal Century. It's Universal Century. Mm. But With a ball is... cock? Well, that would be... Um, what the fuck is this? Young? No. It's Universal Century. And it is... An alternate. Mmm. Mm, like an MSV. Never mobile appeared. Suit never appeared mobile in animation. Like a mobile suit variant kind of thing. Kind of. Okay. Hmm. 
I'll just go back and watch the video for when you set it down on your uh, <laughs> intention. <laughs> read the title. <laughs> that would be the easiest, I suppose. Right? Yeah. Um, it was from UC93. Stardust. 93, no. not 83. No, 93 is what? Shars Counterattack? Mm hmm. You're almost there. Oh, so close. Wait a second. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I own it, so now I have to look through my. <laughs> the high new? Yes. Oh, I was going to say, I just picked it up and was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was clear for some reason, and I didn't build it that long ago. So, shows you how much I'm building the, R the RG though. Hmm. Are you building the RG, Andy? No, nope. they don't make a. There's oh, no there's a new. Like a new. Right, 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 right. And you said it was a master grade as well. I should try to pay attention more. That's a great kit, by the way. Yeah. I haven't. I don't have the clean one. And freaking. Jeff keeps being like, it's so much work. Oh, to paint? I know. Like, to paint? Yeah, I mean, to, to do it all, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. Oh, I'm sure. I have not built the new yet, but the high new was really, really nice. I got it for 60 bucks. Good deal. Heck yeah. Whereabouts did that come through? Amazon. Oh, oh yeah, it was on sale a couple weeks ago. Yeah, last week. I did see that. Yeah, I haven't. I just we just paid off our cruise, um, like today. So <laughs> here, in several weeks, it'll be Christmas time, and I won't be buying anything anyway. Uh, you got your uh, Luna Maria, like a hot custom, right? Yes. Luna Maria. Yep. Hawk. Zaku Warrior. That's the one. Yep, yep. I got it um, like a week ago now, like Friday last week. Saturday last week. Mm -hmm. I have not opened it up too much yet, though. I watched Zach's review on it. to like it. He did say it was really basic, which I'm fine with that. That's no big deal for me. I'm like a knee deep in camouflage Wikipedia <laughs> right now uh, figuring out my order of operation for this layering. These I actually need. Beam effect parts. Big old rifle parts in brown. Ooh, I'm doing this wrong. Right, that is right. That is right. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Brian, I have like the, the whole hip assembly. From, I'm assuming the regular Sananju. Just dipping. Just dipping away. 
<laughs> I still have like quite a few runners left. My golly. They had one of those in the raffle. At Sircon. I it's a really great kit. I thought it was it was it's solid. Yes. It looks He's like done. it's an imposing weapon. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Sazabi is a similar way. Mm -hmm. It has the rifle and or wait, what I assume is the Sanaju rifle. I really don't know at this point. It's the other way around, if anything. Well, yeah, the Sinaju would have the Sazabi, right? Right, 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 right. Pretty sure that Tim's live stream stole all of our viewers, dudes. That's all right. It's a free for all. <laughs> I think it's funny how Tim uses the royal we. Tim uses the royal we. Yes, he does. Yes, <laughs> we shall. We do. Yes, we do. <laughs> shall we? <Oy. laughs> Without further ado, shall we? <laughs> Hilarious. <clears throat> So, um, parts. I think. I might lay down some color. Do it, do it. I mean, I'll be spraying my airbrush in the background, but. Because that's what I have to do. I have to lay down color and then lay down masking and then lay down color and masking. Hey, Jeff's here. Five rounds. Jeff, Jeff. Jeff. Um, yeah, yeah, or like a, just a cutter, vinyl cutter would be good too, Edward. Um, I'm seeing now, I'm just catching up on chat. Uh -oh, my computer's running slow, so I missed everything from earlier. Uh, Edward says, if you have to make a shitload of those, Brian, you can maybe get somebody to cut them out as a vinyl, vinyl paint masks. Seems like you might need a lot. So yeah, I could essentially do that. Um, and, uh... Yeah, um, I probably could do that, but I'm not going to employ one of my friends or uh, figure out how to use the laser cutter at the shop to do it, because I could probably do it with the laser cutter if I wanted to pretty easily and a big sheet of vinyl. Good cool. lord, Paul, are those all extras? Yes, and I still have two complete runners of frame. Wow. Like, untouched, nothing came out of them. Holy I don't even man. know if I want to cut these out or just, like put them in the bag because nothing came out of them. Well, they're parts. There's really, really great parts in those leg pieces. Yeah, I just, I don't know if I'm going to even bother cutting, you know, because it's a full, like literally I've cut nothing out of this runner. They're two complete runners of mm -hmm. shoulder and leg pieces. I might just put them in my spare parts like as a full runner. <laughs> That's like the, uh, the brown, um, the brown frame part right, right yeah so this is the gray like they gave you a brown version and then i guess when in the verka you used gray so they gave you a mm -hmm. duplicate of this runner in another color i don't know why they didn't just make this runner brown well oddly enough paul i also got two runners of those in mine those okay. are gray, gray as well <laughs> but you can see how much is on my desk already yeah i can that's why it's <laughs> remarkable out of out of nowhere out of left field 
Uh, I was like, holy, 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 holy cannoli, holy, <laughs> holy, holy Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of parts, and some of them are pretty cool, like this rifle stock. Yeah, you got I don't know fuel tanks, uh, shield parts, just kind of. Is it like some kind of skirt detail or something? But it's got some, you know, nice Dude, yeah. detail. It's not just like some random, it, you know, plastic was, piece. Uh, I some of those on my brain component for my Mac. That I have. This one's pretty cool it. too. This is like the inside of the rifle, but you got this like corrugated. That's, see, um, I don't have. I do have that, but I don't have it out. I have the same kit you built just now. I just don't have, have it built yet. Um, but in my Verka, I didn't get that. Mm -hmm. So you got, I mean, some some clear parts, like some lenses. Um, you almost have a second gun. Yeah, it's. I, I don't think there's that much missing out of it. And there's, I if there is, it probably just parts that don't go together because there was a trigger in here somewhere and a handle, and it's probably most of what you need. Secondary handle right here. You have those little cover pieces for the Sananjus. Mm -hmm. uh, thrusters. Those are kind of, I don't know why I always like the design of that. Hmm. So, barrels. Yeah. Cool stuff. And like I said, and then two full runners of hip joints, shoulder pieces, leg pieces. This looks like some feet, full thrusters. Some uh, just like attachment style bits. Hmm. Some like piston type details. You name it. This kid's got spares of it. I'm actually, hold on, I'm going to grab my spare parts. Get Basket. Yeah, my, my bag so I don't lose all this stuff. I was going to say, for once, it's not me that's pulling out the spare parts bin on live stream. There you go. I do that though, quite a bit. I gotta figure out better storage for my parts. What are you using right now? High grade boxes. Mm, yes. The problem is once you start to organize that stuff, it just actually takes up more space. Um, I found just because, you know, you start to separate things out, and when yeah. all like one pile, you know, it's like all your Lego. Like you have all your Lego in one box that only takes up so much space, but it is a hellish journey through that box to try and find a little one by one round blue clear component or something, yeah. you know. But then, yeah, I mean, what's your next thing you do? Like me, I got two gallon bags and I separated all the colors out into two gallon bags, which is fine until you have multiple two gallon bags of certain colors. So it's like I have two and a half two gallon bags <laughs> of black components. All right, now go find the one by one brown black. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so what I use, Andy, is I use those art bins. They're like a craft organizer with like, like switchable tabs so you can like make different spaces and stuff and i yeah. have like yeah i've got like five of the small ones and then one of the jumbo ones i've got one of them and that, that jumbo one is basically almost completely full of mega sized zaku parts <laughs> which is ridiculous but yeah i have I one that. of those that i use to good effect on my arbor core build kept all my parts together while i was in the process of painting they didn't have enough skewers to paint it all at once. All right. And we get a little uh, full frontal figure because he's not the pilot of this guy. <clears throat> and of course, the seated one is not like just a guy in a normal suit because that wouldn't make sense. Let me see if the runners are even going to fit in this bag. Camera. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're cutting them out. <laughs> mm 
Exactly. Fishing boxes, definitely right on the money. I need to get my hands on one of those fingernail polish shakers like Chris was talking about. Because I'm over here just like <laughs> Captain Mania. <laughs> I'll run out of fuel though. I got to do here. I have to do this. this. I am just going to cut this runner in half. And that seems like a good idea. Boom, now it will fit in the bag. So I don't have to sit here for a half hour cutting out more parts. Uh, Jeff, I gotta go read your story that you blew up on the uh, <clears throat> on the Discord. I uh, I was I was having to take a bunch of OSHA classes here. It wasn't fun. Uh, you got the uh, lore. parts set aside Jesus. <laughs> sounds like quite the ordeal Guys, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab something to drink. Good idea. Stay hydrated. <laughs> I see you, Jeff, says he didn't intend to write a novel. It's all right, man. Trust me, I am long of wind. Uh, <laughs> and not just in the bathroom. Um, oh, snap. Yeah, right. I had to make a weird jab at myself to lighten the mood. <clears throat> So uh, a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. Uh, I know it's a joke. Uh, well, a funny thing that did happen was that I've been buying these mission model paints for a little while, right? Because I'm, I'm just kind of like testing out to see what's out there that I really do like them quite a bit. Um, but when I got them, I originally got like um, like a like something like this, like a blue and a gray and a green. You know, pretty common colors to go together for military style stuff mm -hmm. and then like another time i went in and i got like um like what did i get like a yellow and like a gray or something you know and then like another time i went in and i got like a a red and like a and like a you know kind of like a lighter blue That's, you know and then i got like a a drab and an orange because those also kind of go together but uh i purchased all these no more recent than like eight or nine months ago, right? That's the last time I purchased any of these paints. I was sitting here with them on my desk while I'm working on this stuff, figuring everything out. And I was like, oh, uh, a little bit closer to here. I was like, oh, uh, wait a minute. I got a, I got the red. And then I got the orange and the yellow. Uh, green and the blue 
and I got like a full set of primaries that I didn't actually intend on buying as like a full set of primaries, but are essentially like almost a, a perfect set of primary paints to work with. Uh, it just that blew my mind a couple of days ago <laughs> <laughs> because I had I have no absolutely no intention of buying a set of primaries at all. Um, I was just buying them because I like the colors and I had them and you know I bought them in relationship to these other colors, which are also happen to just be like the base of my flex iron with this uh, Createx uh, infected blue expired blue sorry expired blue color. Yeah, I don't know. Coincidences. Yeah, it's the little things in life. Cosmic alignments. It was meant to be his match. <laughs> now I gotta right. pick out something to start building next. All right, Polly. You were talking with me last time. Mm -hmm. Last talk about a couple of kits. You talked about a death scythe, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, because Halloweenish. Yeah, you were Death Scythe, maybe? Um, it's been a couple weeks. I can't remember the other one you were talking about, though. I know you were on the wingtip. <laughs> Yay! For a while there, so... Didn't know if you want to go back that route, or... Hmm. What do I have? What don't I have? Yeah, exactly, brother. Well, I know you have um, you have a few ashtrays. <laughs> I, I have too many ashtrays, yes. <laughs> For a guy that doesn't smoke, you got an awful lot of ashtrays hanging around. A couple of blues, a couple of golds, a couple of reds. Any greens? No, I have a green for I don't think... They, well, they only make a... Uh, they only make the green frame in a no grade and a perfect grade. Oh. The perfect grade is insanely expensive because it's a 7 Eleven. Yeah, I was going to say it's like $600 or something like that. Oh. Hmm. What about our resident horde master, Jeffrey? Do you have any green ones? <laughs> I don't know if he likes the uh, ashtrays or not. I feel like he built a perfect grade. Ashtray. Um, hmm. I'm unfamiliar. I think he built, or at least he has one. I know. I just remember the ground type. Wasn't that what that was? Or was it the 79? Yeah, that, I think that's based on the, like, the Mark II or the 78. I'm not sure. Ah. I know in December I want to build one of the big kits, either the Deep Striker or the Excess. But I'm like, going to break that out in December. To... Like in December time, I think. It's going to be like a Christmassy. Yeah, the Excess uh, that Jeff got in today makes the mind play boggle. Yeah. Uh, it is out of control. Yeah, that thing's crazy. It's, uh, yeah, unfathomable. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. I know, right? I couldn't tell at first. He was like, oh, here's this thing. And I was like, well, that's a funky looking base. What the heck is that part? <laughs> and then I I scrolled up and saw that it was the real excess. And I was like, wait a minute. And then I looked again at the other picture and was like, holy cow, that box is behind him. Holy <laughs> moly. Huge. It's huge, Tom. I think that I might have entertained the notion of that kit for about Hmm. Maybe four seconds after I had the realization of the size of it. I was like, no. Yeah. Unless you were going to, maybe no. you'd sleep on it. Like, <laughs> literally on it. <laughs> it's not even a money thing. I mean, I know that I can't do the money thing. I just paid my vacation off or whatever, paid it off with my wife. Um, but uh, yeah, like, where the hell did I store the damn thing? <laughs> like, I wouldn't. Uh, how long yeah. is it taking me to finish this thing? I Man, what about my buddy uh, or our you know friend of the of the community, Michael Wine, and his one to twenty Valkyrie that he just oh finally put together. He spent Eleven months on it, and that thing is gorgeous. But think about a one to thirty five X. <laughs> oh man, harrowing. 
my friend's heroin. But that sort of thing, you almost have to donate it to a shop or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, unless you have like a very understanding wife or a giant room to yourself. <laughs> We're going to encase it in glass and it's going to be our coffee table. Yeah. It's so tall, it couldn't be a coffee table. We're going to lay it down. <laughs> I don't even know. Be- Hollow it out. Have a kid's Halloween costume. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's also weird because it's also slightly bizarre proportions for something along this line. But... Mm-hmm. Hmm. Right. <clears throat> Well, if I start to paint, I have to mute myself. Mute. And it is dirty. Well, for fun, what I'll do is I'll clean up my airbrush. <laughs> ah, maintenance. Oh, I got. Uh... For those people that, that are know me and uh, know my situation, I ruined another cone. Another oh. one. Yeah, just an old another one. one. It gave out. It was it was a little bit um, a little bit messed up when I installed it, and uh, it it gave its its you know finest moment there at the end. It got me where I needed to get to before the replacement came in the mail. So I have a brand new one in there. I was kind of shocked. Did all that spraying, and then I was like, what the? Is this thing bad too? Got up the magnifier, and lo and behold. We got us some more to do. Spot. Hey, doof, doof. Here we go. Edward Leonard said he did the PG Red Frame Kai last Christmas. Sixty-three runners. Christmas three. I did the. Great. Go the on. Xia, I think, was. Last Christmas or the Christmas before? I had quite a few runners. I don't remember. I don't think it was quite 63, though. Yeah, I haven't fucked with a single perfect grade yet. It was fun. It was an interesting build. I'd say that's plenty. It didn't feel like it took that long. Maybe it was nowhere near 63 runners. (laughs) It didn't feel like it took that much longer than... A master grade, other than like it, you know, I had the wiring for all the LEDs and stuff, but that's the way it seemed. This thing took me quite a while, just because it took me quite a while. It, there's nothing about it that made made it take that long. But oh, come on now! Me being lazy. Oh, own, own your shortcomings. But that's what I mean. There's nothing about the kit that made it. You know. <laughs> exactly. I'm just fucking. Take awesome. that long. It's, really it's not crazy detailed. I feel like the uh, Psycho Zaku would take fucking forever. I so there's that so one. many goddamn thruster bells on that kid. You got that one, right, Polly? Yeah. Huh. I have the uh, Mechanicor Teeth Stermer. Oh, the, man. the new one. That one. That one's probably got well over 63 runners. One of these days, man. We'll. <sighs> To pull it open on a on the live stream, we'll go through it. That's, yeah, I'll do that. 
I have that and I have the GPO2. The GPO2 is not that many. It's not. It doesn't look that huge. Oh, right, for Mechanicor. I wanted the freaking Ziegler. Yeah, that one was insane. The size of that it one looked was stupid. So good. There was just so, it just looks so good. I know they're still out there. I can still get one, but. Yeah, they're insane. Yeah, they're insane. Yeah, they are insane. Are they, what is this year they're doing the excess? I'm not really, yeah, I'm not really into it. It's, I mean, it looks fine, but there's nothing wrong with the Bandai one for me. Right. So I don't see a need for it. Yeah, if it ain't broke. But. I haven't seen any pictures of that yet. They did a, like a rendering of the chest area. I remember seeing like, I don't know, a couple months ago they announced it. Hmm. Yeah, because I remember Donovan commenting like they don't even finish a model before they announce the next one. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, because the um, yeah, the he's got head. yeah, he he got the red teeth Sturmer, so I think it got delayed a little bit. I went with the blue one because Bandai's is red, so I figured, oh, okay. like, you could go with a different color. I don't know. Yeah, I'll bet the GP. Oh, three, oh, no. It's a 303. Yeah, plan 303. Plan 303. Deep Striker. Yeah. 303E. E. Yep. I have like a whole big page of notes that I found uh, when I was going through stuff from when I like used to do that show down in South Brooklyn, down in Sunset Park. Uh, when the Deep Striker was released. I like got all hyped about it, did all this research on it. <laughs> Try and like spread some some uh, some facts, some good lore, get people hyped. And I think by the time we got around to talking about it, we were all so tanked that it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the way we were rolling back then. Camera right here. Let's see if I can get this thing up so you can see like the rifle in comparison to the body. He definitely can't hold <laughs> it up. But that is unfortunate, I will say. I'm sure you could probably um, hold it with like the other hand underneath. It has a, a secondary handle further down, but I mean, just straight out in front of them, there's no way. <laughs> what about in the um, like, like holding up like this? Yeah, in the vertical position. Like um, maybe it's a little long. I don't know if he can get the, like the bend out of the back. Possibly though. Okay. Somebody need a haircut. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> this hair's good. Jeffrey, Paulie is still young. Let him have his long hair for the love of God. Yeah, living the dream, man. Living the dream. Us older guys, we just can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Nothing like a freshly polished airbrush flow needle. <laughs> a non-broken cone is pretty nice, too. Well, it is very nice. Actually, I was just <laughs> marveling at it uh, to myself here a second ago. Let me see. Let me pull out the 1400 grit. Uh, I'm sorry. 14,000 grit. Oh, 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 the heavy duty stuff. Super duper light duty. Extra polish. It uh, it is nice actually. Um, it makes for very smooth action. 
All right, I picked out a kit. I know what I'm building. Nice, 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 nice. What is it? What is it? What is it? I'm gonna do the Tableau XN Riser. <sighs> if I can even get it out of the damn closet. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Hold on. Show it on the camera, Polly. Show it on the camera. With the dumbass backpack. Wow. It's when we got that like ridiculous backpack. You know what I'm talking about? Did our uh, community bro English Otaku build one of those recently? Yes, just recently. Cool. Excellent. Awesome. I can take it. I haven't built a double O master grade yet. My first kit was a double O master grade. Yeah, you, you did like the seven swords, right? Yeah, I was punishing myself for some dumb reason. This is like the 35 swords. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can punish yourself now. <laughs> I have the um, tier from Double O. That's the only Double O kit other than yeah, actually, the, yeah, it's the only Double O kit. Yeah, I have I have like all of those over the last two or three years. They came out like the Double O Quanta Full Saber, the like XE Avalanche, and then this one. I bought all of them. Oh yeah, I have a DM Avalanche Exia, but and I have the Dynamis, and I just got a Jinx not too long ago. I recently got a Dynamis. Yeah, I was gonna say, Andy, you got one of those too. That's a pretty cool looking kit. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Hopefully, they come out with the other ones in the next year or so. The Virtue would be so cool. Yeah, the Virtue and the Curios. Gotta say, Double O isn't my favorite. No, as an anime or as a uh, just like the designs. As an anime, uh, it was okay. I mean, it's okay. Yeah, I'm okay with it. But I hear where you're coming from, Andy. It does leave a little bit to be desired. I usually yeah. make it about twenty to twenty-five episodes in, and I'm like, eh, I'm done. Move yeah, on. I'm I'm pretty partial to my Zeta and double Zeta. I like Zeta. That's my I favorite. Done, I haven't done double Zeta yet. Double Zeta, the second half of it was pretty good. It was okay. I started watching some really wonky like Canadian dub on YouTube. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's... Discord like, no, what? Very what is good. going on? I thought he was... Uh, double Zeta had one of the most interesting pilots because he's... I don't know. He, to me, he's a lot different than the rest of them. Like, mm -hmm. especially in uh, UC, like Camille, um, Amaro, and Banager are kind of cut from the same cloth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but very similar. Judo is quite a bit different. Yeah, he's not. He's not a military guy. No, and he's not really like as whiny as them. Like, right. he has his struggles, but he's not as like. I don't know. I like judo. Yeah, he was he was cool, and it's cool that he continues on in the story, mm -hmm. and you know you see him later. Up. Yeah, in Crossbone and in uh, <laughs> um, what else does he show up in? Is it like an F ninety one side story or something like that? He shows up in. I can't remember, but well, that's, that's Crossbone, huh? That's I mean that's Crossbone essentially. That's yeah, he like he crossbone. shows up in something else though. I just can't remember another manga of some sort, like set even further. Like he he fights until he's like eighty, which is pretty cool because some of the other ones you never really see what they do. You know, like obviously yeah, Amuro can... dies, but you never see like what happens to Camille or, I guess, a narrative that... they showed you what kind of happens to Benajer. But would that make him an old new type? Yep, <laughs> he's an old type. <laughs> old type new type. Ah, Gundam, proving that you can teach an old dog new tricks. Mm hmm And how? I guess age had that, too. The, he was like a grandfather in age, and he was still fighting. <laughs> we know what they say. Age ain't nothing but a number. Ooh. 
That was really, that was really bad. <laughs> not, <laughs> not good. <laughs> I'm genuinely sorry. I apologize for that feeling. <sighs> so yeah, XN Riser next. Next week, it'll uh, kind of. It's the end of uh, double October, right? Double O, oh, mm-hmm. double. Yep. Yep. Double zero October. For for what it's worth, I uh, yeah, it'll be next Wednesday. Will be the night that this project is due for me. Oh, mm-hmm. it's the final countdown. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's October 31st is the deadline, but I believe that it's um, some sort of like European time zone, so it's before it's deadline. Mm. Oh boy. I'm going to be I'm going to be working my butt off. Yes. Yeah, you'll be masking for at least the next three days. Actually, I'm not too far away from not having to mask much. You still have all those circles. Oh, well, yeah, that's all just part of the camouflage process. That's just this particular paint process. There are other paint processes that are related to masking. Mm -hmm. There's only one other major masking fiasco that I have to deal with essentially. So that's not terrible in my book. Mm-mm. Was that you, Andy? Yep. <laughs> I think Andy's having um, Wednesday fatigue setting in. Ooh, yeah. yeah. That, it was a long day in front of the computer today. <laughs> I've been up until 2 a.m. for the last two days working. Jeesh. Better than last year. Last year, I spent four months at 2 a.m. Yes, at least 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the delirium was starting to set in at the end there. Huh? Oh, dude. I was so out there. It was nuts. It was very nuts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it got done so yeah, yeah, exactly i got done it looked better at ipms at a mosquito con it looked way better because i had the yeah. chance to rest and look at it and then repaint it and touch it up a little bit and like didn't really repaint it i added a bunch of markings to it and mm. uh weathered it a little bit but i could have done so much more i did like the most uninteresting pose it was the most boring ass pose when i was there i was just like eh, eh. this is all i got <laughs> yeah it was it was it was rough <laughs> yeah even the base i just rattle can painted the base like several days prior to using it i didn't even like put any kind of effort that i'm going to be putting into that base over there that uh, i still have to do but i've been planning on it ah, i still gotta do it though <laughs> I'm not doing it currently uh, but i had a really good idea i was watching some uh edge of tomorrow i don't know if you guys have seen that movie before uh it's tom cruise flick mm-hmm. live die repeat you are correct all you need is kill I like um, that one. What was it Emily Blunt was in that one as well? Yeah, yeah Emily Blunt's in that as well. And uh, a whole slew of other actors. Uh, amazing collection of uh, phenomenal actors in that film. And I've seen that film so many times. But um, yeah, I was watching that and there's some awesome terrain in there. And I was like, ah, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I'm going to employ a little bit of that uh, visual media that I absorbed through my ocular receptacles. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's going to make it look pretty good because it kind of fits with what I already have haphazardly or accidentally or maybe on purpose. I don't know. Psychic network style. Jeff says the book <laughs> is way better. Way better. I have oh, I absolutely believe it. It's only been that way for every... Um, yeah, I'm still book. waiting for someone to tell me the movie was better than the book. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, I can't think of one situation where the movie was better than the book. I haven't even watched Ready Player One because I like the book so much. The movie was good. I mean, I don't. I I have never read the book, so I Uh, I can't compare. But I I will say the movie was very entertaining. Yeah, I think that's what it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. That's all right. And I watch just about anything, and I really don't hold like you know. I'm not gonna like burn something over that. But The Martian. I mean, the the expansions are your one. Oh really? Because you are knee deep. (laughs) <laughs> Much like my wife in the ex- <laughs> knee deep in the expanse. Star Wars was better than novelization. Um, yeah, but I mean, wasn't that that was the other way around where it was a movie turned into a novel, right? Not exactly. Lucas had a, a lot of stuff written down before that yeah. was made, but yeah. It does bounce back and forth, and then they always retcon that, and there's a lot of different things. So right, there's, yeah, I think that's. that's but I mean, it's not like a a book directly adapted to a movie. True. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. even even if that's the case, I don't know if I would count that. I'm thinking something like Harry Potter. I don't know. You know, it's a book oh, yeah. directly mm-hmm. turned into a movie, and not right. that the movies can't be great of certain books, but I, I don't know if I've ever found one that's better. Mm-hmm. Oh, good night, Edward. Ciao. Good night. Um, yeah, no, I, um, <clears throat> I agree with you. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones that I, cause there's been a few that I've seen. Um, what about, okay. What about comic book movies? Right. So my favorite comic book movie is the crow the one with uh, uh brandon lee, lee. Brandon lee? Yep. yep i've never read the comic but i did like the movie quite a bit i saw the movie first and then i got the comic the graphic and this is all back in the 90s um but yeah uh, um yeah i would say that that's probably my favorite comic book film i've seen that movie probably close to 200 times um uh, it's been around since like 1996 or 95. Yeah, or it's, and maybe yeah. even a little earlier, 93. A lot of time. I don't think it's 93. I don't think it's any. It wouldn't be earlier than 94. I don't think. But you googling it? I'm go- 94. Oh. Oh. Well done. 1994. Through my books over here. Oh, there we go. Blade Runner. I, I've never read the book on that one. Oh yeah, do androids dream of electric sheep? It's a whole lot different, to be honest with you. I got this guy. <gasps> I could see where um, science fiction could become a better movie, and it's. Just because, um, oh, very cool. Just because seeing things, you know, like, you know, authors can be great at describing scenery, but especially in set in like a science fiction world or a fantasy world, you know, like sometimes seeing it is different than reading it. Mm-hmm. But, yes, yeah. Philip K. Dick is an odd duck. <laughs> Um, do androids dream of electric sheep is it's weird because if you've seen this have you seen the second film no oh. i haven't seen it yet okay i, saw, I, feel, it. Yeah, I okay. thought it was great right did you read the book I did uh, not. No? okay cool no I, th- I also thought the second film was quite good um and i also i also in a way feel like that movie also relies or calls upon some of the themes that were uh, outlined in do androids dream of electric sheep so there's some few different other things that happen in there um and uh yeah i mean yeah dick is an odd duck dick's a weird one dick's a weird one (laughs) (laughs) Uh, was well yeah yeah 
was. Well, you know, his 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 work isn't dead. It's still alive. So Tom's starting to look like Gumpla Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop shaving now. <laughs> you just gotta go uh, get rid of the Paul there and just go Gumpla Jesus. Yep. Gumpla. <laughs> draw some eyes. Gumpla Jesus. Jesus. But spell it H A Y Z E U S. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Gumpla Jesus. H A I. I need uh, to read the book for Scanner Darkly. That was a brain buster. That was a cool movie. I liked that one. Yeah, that was a tight movie. I love the style. Yeah, definitely. Or just like uh, Waking Life was in a similar style. If you guys have seen that film. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. It's a little existential, but not overtly existential, or it's not d disconnected, you know, but it's mm -hmm. in that same style. It's good. If you want to get all Carl Jung on something, you know. <laughs> Yeah, my friends, colleagues, my associates, contemporaries. We are nearing the eleven o'clock hour. Yeah, well, we can. Um, I'm not going to start building anything because, well, it's eleven. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to start painting anything because that means I have to mute my mic. Man, no, okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs> Lame, Alex. That's because it's 11 a.m. there, Alex. You're lame. Yeah, man. <laughs> no wonder I'm feeling tired. <laughs> yeah, right? Yep. Tomorrow is another long day. Well, as you know, this is a weekly a weekly live stream where at least me and this guy over here... Er, Gump with <laughs> Jesus here. Gump with Jesus. <laughs> uh, are going to be hanging out. Um... Maybe Andy will be hanging around. Maybe he won't be. We'll find out uh, next week on another exciting edition of Live at the Workbench with Paul and Brian. <laughs> hey now. Hey now. 